everyone. You've had a good week. So today, earlier on today, I, you know, when you're dropping off some kids, eh? when you're dropping off your kids, sometimes they tell you that there is assembly on this day and whatever, and you know, you have to go and attend and see what's happening. So today, there was um, a ballet performance. <laughs> and it been hearing about ballet happening in so many schools. But anyway, today, you know, I watched the whole performance taking place and yeah, it was quite an experience. Okay, the, why I'm telling you this, eh, the relat why it's all so relative to what we're doing in Forex trading is um, the kids who are doing this performance were quite young, eh, about uh, five years the oldest and in order to in order to perform eh, you need to have some discipline and yeah so whoever was teaching them you know had some you know had some patience and discipline and all that eh, in order to get these kids to perform to the level that they did today it was quite uh, it was quite mind blowing eh, you know and the dancing alone was quite you know, it was quite nice but then the music and what you know music is the way music can sometimes uh, get into your mind and uh, make you believe certain things. Eh? But it was a very good experience and why it is so significant is uh, <coughs> trading Forex. Eh? Forex trading, eh? I don't want to call it anything else. Eh? I want to call it by its actual name, eh? Forex trading. Eh? Yeah, <coughs> those are some difficult words for some people to hear, but it's Forex trading. It requires some kind of discipline and understanding and appreciation. Eh? in order for someone to make some money out of it. Yeah, so normally when people are learning how to trade and when people are teaching others how to trade, um, you're basically given some information eh, to do with as you please. Eh? You know, no one will tell you that, uh, you know, this and this, you know, this might be the right thing to do, but in certain circumstances or whatever, um, you know, they just give you the information as it is. Eh? Like, eh, you're a grown-up, eh? you're an adult, you know, uh, you know, you, you should be responsible for your own money. Yeah, so the information is normally given to you and there might be a lack of uh, discipline, a lack of appreciation eh, of, uh, you know, of the entire activity and how it's done. Eh? Yeah, so from watching these kids, I realized that, uh, you know, sometimes <coughs> you don't have to just, uh, you know, shove information to people. You know, sometimes people just want it... Uh, they just want information like that. They don't really, they don't want to be, uh, they don't want some explanations or whatever. Yeah, they just want to get some info and then start making money without, uh, you know, without being disciplined in any way. So after seeing how these kids performed, I realized that, you know, you know there might be some, uh, I don't know which kind of, uh, I don't know how people came to construct this whole theory that, uh, someone becomes an adult <laughs> at the age of 18 eh? or 16, eh? they, now, they now change the years. Eh? I don't know how that whole construction came about, but um, you know, I think it's more complex than that. You can't, you can't have a fixed point in time where someone you know, gets into adulthood. Eh? So uh, that is also relevant because uh, with trading, uh, people think that you know, they are good to go at a certain point, eh? at a certain fixed point. Uh, many people think that they are good to know that they are very, very okay and they can trade and start making money. And that's where the losses begin. Eh? Yeah, that's where, you know, <coughs> margin call becomes a, a very common term. Eh? Some people don't even know what margin call is, but it's one of the easiest things to learn in Forex. Yeah? And that's when you learn it by experience eh? over and over and over again. Eh? The, you know, the margin call does not come in short supply. There is a lot of it in supply, you know. So, you know, one way or another, you will know exactly what uh, margin call is. Eh? You might not know what stop loss is because uh, to have a stop loss, you need to have attained a certain degree of uh, responsibility and discipline. Eh? You know, yeah, that one is there in very, very good supply and everyone knows exactly what it is. Eh? So, uh, the very first time this program ran, eh, you know, some very, very many, many months ago, yeah, the very first time this trading don't run, I talked about um, you know, a very small population of Uganda. 
Uh, Uganda has about uh, 40 million people, maybe uh, many more are being produced. And and those who are, you know, those who know something to do with, uh, you know, technology and computers and whatever. Um, I was looking at uh, maybe just one million Ugandans. Yeah, that, was the, that was the number that I was looking for. There yeah, are 10% would have been 4 million Ugandans, but those are many. But I was looking at maybe one million yeah, who have gone through, you know, some good levels of education who can appreciate uh, something like forex trading. So what I was looking at, eh, um, okay, at that time I was very, very ambitious. I still am extremely ambitious. Eh? But at that time I was looking at, uh, you know, one million Ugandans and looking at a timeline of just one year for all of these Ugandans to attain a goal of uh, having $10,000 on their forex accounts. Eh? $10,000 uh, withdrawable money. Yeah, so that would be a lot of money if all the 10 million, sorry, if all the 1 million withdraw. So that was a goal eh, that I had set, a very, very ambitious goal. Eh? Yeah, so 12 months, 1 million Ugandans, and you know, all of them achieving um, one, uh, sorry, $10,000 through trading Forex. Eh? Yeah, so I, you know, I literally did everything possible to try and educate through the program and you know see how all that would pan out but it seems like um you know there some uh, some help eh? some help is needed i think at one point i at one point i talked about uh, putting a robot online so that uh, people could use the help of this robot to you know to you know to to make some profits eh? of their accounts eh? yeah so i talked about that and the robot was supposed to run for maybe one or two years and yeah, so uh, those are the plans that I had. You know, very ambitious plans to get, uh, yeah, to, to create some kind of financial revolution. Eh? You know, sometimes um, you need to start somewhere. Yeah, and you can't start below a certain mark. Eh? You need to start uh, at a certain level. Eh? You can't. You know, you need to have people who have at least some thousands of dollars so that you know you start from there. But if people have ten dollars, five dollars. 20, you know, it becomes difficult to analyze anything and make, uh, you know, some good trades, eh? But if you have thousands of dollars, then you can, you know, you can trade and make some sensible profit, eh? You know, depending on this economy, eh? You know, you, you need to make some, if you make like $50 every day, that's like uh, 170K every day. You know, that is now some sensible money in this economy, eh? If you, you know, if you deposit $10, and you make zero point five dollars every day, yeah. That is like making about uh, you know one thousand five hundred. Eh? That is not uh, that's not serious money. So yeah, even if you make that is like twenty k at the end of the <laughs> at the end of the month, eh? that is not good money. Eh? But uh, you know if you make fifty dollars, that is quite. Uh, there can be some change. Eh? There can be some change in how things run. Eh? And if um, yeah, if we aim for those big numbers. Uh, I've heard so many traders talking about uh, making a thousand dollars a day, five hundred dollars a day, and yeah, when people listen to such things, you know, it seems like you know this is uh, these guys are speaking some rubbish. Eh? Yeah, how can you make five hundred dollars a day? That is that is impossible. <laughs> that is uh, yeah, that's impossible. It's an unattainable goal. Eh? It's a lot of money. You know, that is uh, in discipline. Eh? You know, instead looking at the young generation as some. You know, some people who have lost their way because they have such goals. Eh? But it's very attainable and, you know, we need to start having such goals. Eh? You know, if you're trading and your goal is to make uh, maybe some small money, $5 every day, you know, $10. It's good money, but we need to aim higher and we need to use all the tools at our disposal to attain those goals. Eh? So my goals were quite... Um, yeah, they are quite uh, exaggerated, so especially for the public. You know, my personal goals are also a bit exaggerated. But for the public, for the people who watch this program, uh, I wanted that kind of a that kind of a movement. Eh? You know, so that you watch this program as you benefit financially, as you benefit, uh, as you make a profit eh? every day. You know, it's good to watch a program. If you watch TV, 
and maybe sometimes you will learn something, maybe sometimes you will laugh. But if you watch TV and you make some money, you know, that's quite a, you know, that's some good TV. Eh? I, would, I would want to watch such programs. Eh? You know, you, today you wake up, you have a certain amount of money, then you watch TV, and you wake up tomorrow with even more money. Yeah, that is quite, a, that's a nice goal. Eh? Yeah, so with the use of um, expert advisors, I think initially when I had that very big, uh, when I made that very big announcement, Many months ago, uh, you know, that was for everyone to really dig in deep and, you know, start making some progressive uh, profits. Eh? And then I realized that, you know what, we need an expert advisor that can really make this happen. Eh? Yeah, so, you know, big things don't just happen with a lot of struggle. They happen with ease. Eh? They happen with a lot of ease. Eh? You find there's that uh, exponential rise. Eh? You know, you can have... Uh, it is exponential. The other word is, um, um, okay, when I get it, I'll tell you about it. So, <clears throat> an exponential rise is, uh, you know, you have like, let's say you have uh, $1,000 today, then you start making about $100 every day, and at the end of the week, you have $1,500. Eh? So, that means that next week, you're only making just $100 because, uh, okay, the word is compound, eh? you know, compound interest, uh, Compound, rise, exponential, compound. Yeah, depending on your English teacher, you know, it means uh, sort of the same thing. Eh? So, yeah, so you have a thousand dollars this week. You make five hundred dollars from that a thousand. Then um, next week, you have one thousand five hundred. Yes, so you won't be making a thousand dollars like you were in the beginning because now you have one thousand five hundred. You'll be making a uh, hundred and fifty every day. Yeah, so that is. Uh, so that is a rise. Your curve will be, be moving in a certain curve. Eh? It won't be a flat diagonal curve, but then there will be a rise in it, eh? which will show you um, yeah, some great rise eh, inside there. So uh, you normally see those curves with robots. Eh? When the robot starts with about uh, maybe $500, and then it rises there, rises there. You know, the curve keeps on you know, moving upwards. Eh? Yeah, so that um, can very much happen. Eh? So, with the help of uh, robots, uh, you can <coughs> work with your account like that. It can be helping you. And so many things are now automated and so many things can be automated in the future. And it can take just small steps, eh? very small steps. And you can review all these things. Eh? You know, all of us together, we do a review of all these things and see how we can, you know, how we can make it happen. Eh? Yeah. So... Um, yeah, so those are some goals, eh? Those are some goals for the public that I say that, you know, you can really benefit from doing such things that when the money grows and becomes a lot, then you can get that money and put it into, um, you know, a money management account, eh? Where you will have some goals and you can benefit from that, eh? you know, structuring your profits and your money, you know, you, and, you, know, you basically structure your life eh? and set some goals, uh, you know, with some annual goals eh, so that you don't uh, look at only the short term uh, what the short term impact of the, of the work that you're doing or of the investments that you've made but then you look at some long term goals eh, that you can make so that you have some serious stability in your life eh? okay so today on the economic calendar there isn't really much eh? you know if you look at it there are just a few speeches um, you know, let's just take a look at these events today yeah, and see exactly what we have. You know, there's, we have been having so many high impact events eh, uh, these previous days, but today, you know, they are quite, uh, they are few. Eh? So um, at midday, there are quite a number of events. Eh? These ones are coming from, uh, the first ones are coming from Italy, uh, business confidence and consumer confidence. Now, these ones here don't really have uh, much impact. There is the M3 money supply. And then there is M3 money supply year over year affecting the euro. And then there's the private loans year over year affecting the euro. But all these are very low impact. The ones which have some good medium impact are uh, also at midday, but then uh, affecting mostly Germany. So we have the IFO uh, business climate. 
um, <coughs> IFO business climate. Our previous figure is 98.9 and the expected is uh, 94.2. So this one here is negative, expected to be negative for the euro. Then this one here is the IFO current assessment. Previous figure is 98.6 and the consensus is 96.5. There's another expectation there for a negative, uh, for some negative impact for the euro. Then uh, this one here is the IFO expectations. Um, previous figure is 99.2. The consensus is 92. Eh? So these events are quite uh, negative, expected to be negative for the euro. But then the market impact is not that big. Eh? This is a very nice way to close a Friday. At uh, 5 p.m., there is a speech from the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. Eh? This speech is from, uh, John, it's from John C. Williams. Eh? Yeah, so that speech is at 5 p.m. Uh, what he will speak will definitely have some good impact. Uh, given that today is a Friday, you know, we expect uh, some volatility, especially with the U.S. dollar. Okay, still at the same time, at uh, 5 p.m., the Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index. This event is normally a high-impact event, but today it's a medium-impact event. Eh? So previous figure is 59.7. The consensus is 59.7. So we might have no change from there. Um, pending home sales affecting the U.S. dollar. Uh, previous figure is negative 5.7 percent. The consensus is 1.5 percent. This is very good for the pending home sales. So there is a positive. Uh, yeah, there is a positive expectation from that event. Eh? That one is month over month, year over year. There is no consensus there. It's a uh, pending home sales. Eh? But there's no consensus here. The previous figure is negative 9.5 percent. So. Uh, this one here, we shall expect the market impact, we shall expect those figures at exactly that time and, you know, we can make a decision from there. Then at 7 p.m., there is another speech from the Federal Reserve. Yeah, this one here is from uh, Christopher. Yeah, Christopher J. Wella or Walla. Yeah, so he's a member <coughs> of the board of the governors of the Federal Reserve. Eh? And that one is at 7 p.m., uh, market impact will definitely be there. Yeah? Always make sure you look at your time zone and make sure your time is uh, exactly what it's supposed to be. Eh? Uh, it's just supposed to be GMT plus three hours. Eh? So 7.45, another speech from the Bank of Canada. Uh, this one is called uh, Tony Gravo yeah? or Tony Gravel. Yeah? So that speech will be there at uh, 7.45 and it will be affecting the Canadian dollar. So the rest of the events after that will be very, very small, uh, you know, very small impact events. Their previous figures are there. There is no consensus for any of those figures, yeah, which is quite, uh, yeah, that is quite expected. Eh? So uh, those are today's events on the economic calendar. We are going to take a short break right now. And when we return, we're going to look at some charts. Eh? And we see how these, uh, you no, know, we see how these markets are closing on. Friday, so that we have some expectations for Monday. You know, in case there are any events taking place over the weekend, you know, some news, some presidential speeches, they will definitely have an impact on the market. When we are not seeing what exactly is taking place, then on Monday we shall be hit with the impact. Eh? So we're going to take a look at all these. Uh, we'll look at some charts, eh? not all the charts, but just a few charts. Eh? We're going to take a look at them after this break.